Corvette evokes a certain Americana that young and old yearn to get behind the wheel of the car. So when people see it, the first thing they want to do is drive it. My name is Corvette Mike Vietro, and today I am sitting behind the wheel of the Harley Earl SR2, the Sebring Racer, which was born in 1956. The SR2 was the brainchild of Harley Earl. His son was racing Ferraris at the time. Harley Earl, being the head of the styling studio, probably was called into the office of the president of General Motors and said, hey, I saw your son this weekend at the track. What's with Jerry driving a Ferrari? If you value your job here at General Motors, I highly suggest he starts driving an American car, preferably the Corvette. So off the assembly line comes this 1956 Corvette, which needed heavily modifications to go out and compete against the likes of the European cars. What they did is they brought the car to the styling studio in Warren, Michigan, where any number of guys, upwards of 17, worked day and night to transform a 1956 Corvette into the SR2. lengthened the car, gave it a more powerful engine, did styling cues on the outside that would help and enhance its racing and performance. The car was made to race and to win. It was later in 56 that the fuel-injected engine, now developing 331 horsepower, was used to try to keep up on the track when they found that the basic 265 with two four barrels was not adequate. Coupled with a four-speed transmission, now the SR2 could get around the track and keep up with the European boys. The car is referred to as the first General Motors sponsor purpose-built Corvette racer. When you speak about rare Corvettes, the SR2 has to come to mind. One of two, none ever sold publicly? I mean, what could potentially this car be worth? Look at its peers. The Sebring Racers launched Chevrolet and General Motors into factory-sponsored racing. Here we are today with the SR2, one of two.